Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making some easy, delicious crab cakes. So let's get started. First off, I want about two tablespoons of fresh parsley. I'm gonna give this a nice chop, but I wanna tell you something about these crab cakes. They're one of the easiest recipes you're gonna make, and there are so many chances for you to add extras into it. So I have my like base recipe, and I'm gonna add some optional ingredients throughout this day, starting with some herbs from my garden. I have some fresh chives and tarragon, Smell amazing. So I'm gonna add in a couple tablespoons of that too. Parsley has a wonderful like vegetal taste, but it's quite subtle in my opinion. So I like to amp it up with some tarragon, some chives and other things for a little bit more bite. Speaking of Krabby Patties, Lachlan saw SpongeBob SquarePants for the first time and he thought it was underwater Swiss cheese. He's like, I wanna watch the underwater cheese show, which I thought was hilarious. Okay. This is definitely more than two tablespoons of fresh herbs, but like garlic, you should measure herbs with your heart. Set that aside. And another optional ingredient I'm adding today is a little bit of red onion. I'm gonna give this a mince, just really finely chop it, and it'll add a little bit of bite, which complements all the flavors really well. I want about a quarter cup of this. That looks nice. We're gonna get all these ingredients into a bowl now, and. This recipe is like significantly over. That was all the prep. It's now just mixing and forming. It's so easy, it should be a crime. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I publish two new videos a week and there is always a delicious recipe on the horizon. Grab a big bowl and we're gonna get to work. I'm gonna add half a cup of mayonnaise. This is the delicious glue that'll hold things together. A good tablespoon of a nice Dijon mustard. This is gonna add some bite and a little acidity. It feels so wrong to use any kind of measuring implement for Worcestershire sauce, but here I am doing it. One and a half teaspoons, one and two. One teaspoon of a comically large hot sauce. Oh, I like it spicy. Okay, a quarter teaspoon of salt. One lemon, we're gonna zest this up. This is a one teaspoon of zest situation, which means a lot of lemon zest. Okay, I mean, that's more than a teaspoon, but I don't care, I can't help myself. A teaspoon of lemon juice. A quarter teaspoon of black pepper. One egg. The egg and the mayo are the glue that'll hold things together. They work hand in hand. And now, a fistful of herbs, or two tablespoons. And I'm gonna use a quarter cup of my minced red onion. Remember, this is optional, but I just really like it. And it's my recipe and my kitchen, so I'm gonna do what I want. Grab a whisk and let's mix it up. This is delicious, but they are crab cakes after all. So one pound of lump crab meat goes right in. If you bought crabs and cracked them open and got the meat out, I'm so proud of you for doing that. I just bought the lump crab meat. <laughs> I'm gonna break some of this up right now because it's a little bit stuck together. And to this mixture, I'm also adding half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. This will fill it out and just bring it together a bit more. Use a spatula and gently fold things together. Don't go crazy, you're just distributing the crab meat and making sure it's nicely coated with the sauce. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna set this aside, grab a lined baking sheet and start shaping things up. By the way, these are chive flowers and they're beautiful and delicious. It's time to scoop, so we're gonna get about half a cup per patty. This is a close scoop, I tell ya. Use your hands to form it up. It should be about three inches per. So shape it into a beautiful crab patty, crabby patty and we're gonna place this on the baking sheet. Just repeat for the remaining mixture. When you shape your patties, you're just pressing together a little bit so they won't fall apart when they bake, and uh, you're forming the sides too, so you can form them into a ball, and then press down gently, just like that. We didn't overmix this batter, so now we have lots of big pieces of crab showing through, which is nice. I'm gonna cover these right now and refrigerate for at least 20 minutes up to six hours. The chill time allows the crab cakes to set up. Those panko crumbs are gonna absorb moisture and they'll hold together nicely during the browning. If you don't do this step, they can fall apart and it's not satisfying. And if you wanted to, 
you could freeze these. Pop this whole thing into the freezer and let it set up for about two hours, then transfer to like a freezer safe bag or container. They're gonna last for a month. Then, when you're ready to use them, defrost in the refrigerator overnight and then cook them off just like you normally would into the fridge. So I hope you see how easy it is to make this crab cake mixture. You can add in all of your favorites, not use the things that you want. For example, if you love capers, add a few tablespoons of capers in. I love them, but other people will not come near them, so I didn't use them today. I love crab cake so much, I even have a totally different crab cake recipe in the book. Crab cake latkes with a garlic caper aioli in the winter chapter of my book. So if you have that, crack it open and try those out too. My crab cakes have chilled and come together. It's time to grab a big pan of your choosing and a tablespoon of oil and get to work. Place the pan over medium heat and get that oil nice and hot. Once your oil's dancing in the pan, we're gonna cook our crab cakes in batches of three. So grab a spatula, plop those on. I love using a big cast iron pan because it really like holds the heat and radiates it, but it could get pretty hot, so feel free to go down to medium low if you think it's like getting to that smoky point. Plop those on. These crab cakes just need like three minutes of cook time per side. You can give them a peak like two to two and a half minutes in just to see if they're nice and golden. Maybe your pan got really hot and you don't want them to burn. Then we'll flip them over carefully. The goal is to maintain the integrity of the crab cake without having something that's like dense and pressed together. It should have like a nice light texture on the inside. It'd be a delicious vehicle for a wonderful tartar sauce. Um, uh, tartar sauce, the best. If you're wondering, when would I ever have crab cakes? When wouldn't you have crab cakes? I'd have these almost any time of day. Perfect for a lunch or brunch with a wonderful salad. They're great for dinner as an appetizer, or you can make it a main course by tossing in some sides. And let me tell you, for breakfast, I would have I keep calling them the Krabby Patties. I would have a crab cake with a poached egg and some hollandaise sauce, maybe some wilted spinach. Oh my gosh, so good. It's probably been about three minutes. Let's give it a test. Perfectly golden. Very nice. Take a little peek. That looks nice and golden. So I'm gonna remove these to a clean baking sheet or any kind of plate and cook them in batches. Once they're all cooked, grab that tartar sauce and you're ready to enjoy. I'll be having my crab cake with a big dollop of tartar sauce and a nice squeeze of fresh lemon juice. Mmm. That is so light and refreshing, full of that wonderful crab flavor with the herbs, the onion, the Dijon, everything's coming together and it's delicious. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my seafood playlist. Hey, I'm John Cannell and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making some delicious, easy crabby patties. No. <laughs> Sorry.